In this video, we're going to find you Llama 3.18 billion. Now, I'm sorry my voice is a bit weird because I'm a bit sick right now, so I really hope it doesn't annoy you guys. But nevertheless, the reason why we fine tune Llama models or large language models in general is to perform better on your domain data so that when you get a final output, it's a better generation based upon your data. Now, first things first, we're going to divide this video up into essentially five different steps. We're going to install the packages, prepare the data set, I'm going to show you guys how the data should look like when you're trying to adapt it to your data. I'm going to train the model and I'm going to do inferences on that. Different ways to do inferences based upon your requirement. And now we're going to save the model after we've done all the different steps over here. By the way, I make similar videos like these on LLMs, machine learning and other data science tools. So please feel free to subscribe. So first things first, let's install the packages. So the packages will be install unsloth. We can use unsloth to train a model. And we're going to install Accelerate and Bits and Bytes and many other things. So, and also side note, we are using a T4 GPU. I believe this is a free GPU provided by Google Colab. So you essentially need no money to train your model, which is amazing. Now we're going to load our Llama 3 model or Llama 3.1 model. So first things first, we're going to import our packages, Unsloth and Torch. And we're going to set the max sequence length, D-type and load in 4-bit. Now we're ready to load our model. So we are going to be loading the model from Unsloth over here and not from Meta, but they're both essentially the same thing and they should work equally as well. So let's load the model and press run. And now we load the model using LoRa. The reason why we use LoRa is because we only want to update one to 10% of the parameters while we are training. And to do that, we will pass in the model, choosing the number, the target module, so which modules we want to use to update and some other configurations. And now once you've done that, all we have to do is to prepare our data set. Now, in this case, we'll be using the Alpaca clean data set. This has an output, an input, and an instruction. Essentially, it's an instruction data set. Now, the thing is, the model understands column names with response over here. So input, instruction, and output. So instead of output, we're going to rename it to response. To do that, we'll first initialize a string that looks like this, and then we add the EOS token. And then we create a function, which takes each examples from the data set we will load very, very soon and add the appropriate column names that we want. And now all this we have to do is to actually load the data set. So we can use data sets library from Hugging Face to load the data set, and we can download the train split. By the way, side note, if you don't have labeled data that you can use to train a Llama 3.1 model, that's okay. If you have just normal data that is not labeled, you can actually pre-train the model or further pre-train the model with unlabeled data. I actually show that in my data society, which is a private community where I have different courses on different things, such as continuous pre-training LLMs, deployments, advanced synthetic embeddings, which will come very, very soon. And also I'm gonna be soon going to publish the deploy embeddings model using AWS. So please feel free to check it out. Now for the fun part, we actually get to train our model. So what we have to do right now is import the packages. So arguments, SFTT trainer, unsloth. We're going to configure the training configurations. So pass in the model, the tokenizer, data set, pass on training arguments. And these are training arguments that we depend on different models. But over here, you can play with to see which one performs best for use case. Again, this requires some experimentations. We run that. Now that it's loaded, now we're going to train our model. So quickly, we're going to check out the current memory stats. So we have 14 gigabytes of memory available. And now we're going to train our model. So we press run and we simply wait until the training procedure is finished. And then we're going to see how we can do inferences on it. Now the training has been done. We can see the final memory and time stats for the training. So it took around seven minutes to train our model. And now we can actually make some inferences. So first, we're going to load the model for inference. And then we're going to tokenize our query. So this is our query that we formatted using the alpaca prompt that we defined earlier. And then we get the final output. And there we have it. Here we got a final output of the model with the different responses. Now, there is another way to do inferences on, which is much better. So it's something called a text streamer. I believe this is something quite new to Hugging Face. Essentially, what it allows you to do is to real time stream the response output. So you don't have to wait until the final output over here. So again, a similar fashion or in similar fashion, we're going to tokenize our input and we're going to stream our output. The way we do it is we're going to input transformers text streamer, we're going to tokenize or pass in the tokenizer, and then we're going to generate our output, which looks like this. So unpack the inputs, text streamer, and then you pass in the max tokens you want to stream and press run. 
And as we can see, we can get real time responses over here. So what about saving? Now we've trained a model, inferenced with our models. How do you save it? Now, the best way to save it is actually by pushing it to Hugging Face Hub. Now this is, I've uncommented this over here because I don't need to save the model. I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. But essentially you save the model, save the tokenizer, and then you push the model to the hub with a name you provide and the Hugging Face token. This will be available in your Hugging Face profile settings. And if you want to save the model for VLLM, which is actually, to be honest, I don't know much about, but I believe this helps you to deploy the model more easier. But if you guys want to save the model using 16-bit, 4-bit, or lower adapters, you guys can also do it as well. Again, the code will be provided in the description down below. All right, guys, that is how you fine-tune a Llama 3.1 8 billion model in the most simplest way possible using Onslaught. I hope you found this video insightful. If you guys did, please feel free to subscribe. I make similar videos like these. All right, guys, I wish you the very best. Have a nice day.